Hey, hi, hello, everybody. Oh, a guest. <laughs> hello. We've got things to unbox. Happy January. I just got every box today, so I will be unboxing these for you. <laughs> I'm unboxing these, like, the day I got them. You're gonna see this probably two weeks from now. It is what it is. <laughs> that is video making. <sighs> but I'm also out of breath. I've been running around. I've been busy today. I've done a lot of things, so... I'm excited to just kind of unwind and create a mess and unbox things and just have fun with you guys. With that said, let us start with Owl Crate Adult. I am financially getting to a point where I might have to cancel some of my book subscription boxes. So January and February are kind of going to be like the trial months to see like which boxes are really worth keeping and if I should just go to book only for some of them and keep them like so on and so forth. So that's kind of what I'm teetering with behind the scenes if you're curious. That's kind of what I've been going back and forth on right now is just like what's worth keeping what's not uh, because these are all very expensive to be completely candid if you're ever curious um, and you don't want to do all the math I think I spend about $250 a month on book subscriptions alone, which is a lot of money. It adds up really fast. And so as fun as this is, and I do love them and I do enjoy them, I'm, I get really bad FOMO. So when I see people with these editions, I'm like, oh, I wish that I could have that because it's so pretty and I was excited for the book. But realistically, I don't read all of them and they're very expensive. <laughs> so that's a little look of what's going on with me. But this month is as normal, so we're just gonna get started. This month's theme is Mortal Hearts. I could not read what that was for a second. January, adult book. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So this first book is The Longest Autumn by Amy Avery. Look at that shine. On the back it says magic infuses our world and it is the blood of the gods that carry it. I like this color. It's so autumn, <laughs> as you can maybe tell by the title, uh, which is funny to me because it is still technically winter. Ooh, this art though, I'm kind of obsessed. I will show you guys in the close up. Ooh, okay. Slippery dust jacket. <gasps> oh, wow. I'm <laughs> getting very excited. You can't tell very well right now, but there's like a, a faint outline of the print from the title and it kind of looks cool. But I like this art. And then we have the book itself, which is very green and foiled. I don't think green and orange is like my favorite color combo to ever exist. But the front says, do I not get to choose what is sacred and what is sinful? And the back says, Hearts will heal, the season will give way to spring, to summer, to winter, and on and on and on. But we will never forget that longest autumn. I hope that's correct. I have a really hard time <laughs> reading uh, cursive. Ooh. But, yeah, I really like this art. It's very dark. And then, of course, the letter from the author as well as it's signed. I really love this like yellow mustard it's kind of like gold without being shiny I'm kind of living for it I really enjoy that color but what is this about you ask well let me read you the synopsis oh my gosh there's a ribbon bookmark <laughs> I love when that happens so cool okay anyway under the right circumstances would even a god fall I'm gonna say Tyrion I don't know if that's correct Tyrion is one of the four humans rigorously selected to usher the turn of the season into the mortal world. Every year she escorts the taciturn god Autumn between the godly and human realms. Autumn's seasonal stay among mortal beings, cooler weather, changing leaves, and the harvest of apples and gourds until winter takes his place. This year the enchanted mirror that separates their worlds shatters after Tyrion and Autumn pass through, trapping both of them in the human realm. As the endless autumn stretches on, crops begin to fail and the threat of starvation looms. Away from the magic of the gods' home, Tyrion's debilitating headaches return with a vengeance. Worse, autumn's extended stay in the human realm turns him even more mortal and vulnerable, stirring a new, forbidden attraction to Tyrion. While the mortal realm scrambles to find a way to re reassemble the mirror, 
Jaren digs into the secrets of the high society and finds an unlikely ally or enemy in the enigmatic sorcerer and master of potions, Sidrel. Thrown into the world of mystery, betrayal, and espionage she, as she searches for the truth, might Tyron lose her morals, hard-earned position, and the illicit spark between her and Autumn. Ooh! I'm kind of into that. Like, it's very Autumn. <laughs> it's, it's like super fall vibes, like the embodiment of the season. That just sounds cozy. Do I now have to wait until, like, October, November to read this? Yeah, that kind of sucks, but here for it, at least. And now we can jump into Young Adults, Owl Crate. I truly love Owl Crate. It's got such a special place in my heart. Pachinho! And this month's theme is Enchanted to Meet You. Ooh. Okay, so the first thing I'm seeing is the new pin collection. Perfect Pairings Collection. Okay, okay. I'm not like a big pin person, but Owl Crate really does them right. Whoa. Whoa. This is so cool. Okay, so it's a little Howl's Moving Castle pin, but like you can move it until so, like they're separated and it's like a little bit longer, but then you can like push it together. I'm scared I'm gonna break it. That's kind of cool. So yeah, as I mentioned, it's Howl's Moving Castle. You guys will see better in the close up, but very cool. All right, and then the next thing that I'm seeing, fancy, is I think a bag. So it's a tote bag and it says the hollow, in for travelers and adventurers. This is very cute. Um, it's like a canvas bag. No pockets or anything on the inside, but it is very nice. Oh my goodness, oh, on the sides, it's got like little like, I think this might be peaches or something, or maybe apples and like little mushrooms, a little fox. Oh, that's such cute detailing on the side. Uh, adorable. Precious. I love this. So the tote bag is inspired by Once Upon a Broken Heart, and it was designed by Jade Cunningham at Bluely Boo. Very cute. Ooh, okay, next. It looks like we have colored pencils. Historical romance coloring kit. Indulge in some romantic self-care with this coloring kit with these gorgeous postcards designed by Vera Drummond. Vos Voski? I'm so sorry. And pencil crayons designed by Teresa Chen at the Divine Literary. This set references three iconic historical romances, Outlander, Bridgerton, and Pride and Prejudice. Interesting. Yeah, you've just got your classic um, colored pencils. Pretty colors. I do like them. Okay, and then it looks like there's some postcards that we can color in. Cheesy classic little romance. <laughs> Postcards? I don't don't think you're really gonna send them, but they're very simple designs. So they're kind of fun. You're just gonna like fill in the foliage. And then the next thing I am seeing is Creatures and Companions, Emily Wilde Cyclopedia of Fairies. What is this? Oh, it's a bookmark. Oh cute! So it looks like this is Shadow. Um with some little foliage and then the skulls and then her cute little old dog. I'm in the middle of the second book of Emily Wilde and I like the dog a lot. Um, it's putting me in a bit of a reading slump and it's taken me all of January to read so it's a bit of a bum bummer but it's a very cute bookmark and I love dogs so I can't complain there. And then here we have the Dreamer Reusable Dishcloth, inspired by Strange as a Dreamer by Lainey Tate. I don't know what to do with that information. <laughs> Maybe this will give me a little bit more. Yeah, it's just re or reusable napkin. Features a stunning design, inspired by Strange as a Dreamer. This is done by Jordan Fleming at The Pros and Cons. And the item is perfect to keep your space pristine and dreamy. So, yeah, it's just, I guess you get it wet and then it becomes more cloth-like material. I can't say I have come across too many of these but it's it's cute it's a nice art print I think it says if you're afraid of your own dreams you're welcome in mine very cute okay this looks so cute very fairy tale like 
I'm loving the color combos for these. The thing is, Owl Crate just always slaps. It always hits. I always just enjoy the items. They feel more usable and just like up my alley for what I'm looking for, even if they get a little repetitive. And then like the books, it's I, they're just so pretty. And I usually like have either heard of them and I'm so excited and highly anticipating it or like have never heard of it, but it's like so right up my alley. I've heard good things so far from the ARC readers. It's been pretty positive. People are pretty excited about it. I haven't heard like only good things so I'm intrigued to see how I feel about this this is definitely one that I have been interested in and had on my anticipated releases so I'm excited to get to this at some point and then next month's theme is treacherous love so fun fun exciting stuff I'm so pleased like wait like out of all of these items love the pin love the bookmark a washcloth that's cute is always necessary you know I clean the postcards I don't really care about truly but I will get a lot of use out of these colored pencils and I'll probably still do these just for funsies and I really like this tote bag I think this tote bag is great I'm really excited about this book this was such a hit I don't want to cancel my owl crate I know I know am I good at making decisions no it's okay so now we can jump into the fairy loot adult this is just book only Let's see what they have going on for us. So, January's theme is Star Chosen. Ooh, okay. I have no guesses. Okay, so we've got the beautiful character art and then the letter on the back. And we have, whoa. This is The City of Stardust by Georgia Summers. You might be able to tell the reflective, like, font. It's like, um, holographic kind of where it's like you know little like pieces cut together I'm explaining this poorly and just absolutely stunning edges the back says curses are made to be broken wow I don't think I've heard of this one I'll be honest this one seems new to me okay open her up we've got the same end pages as the print and then on the other side we have, I'm assuming, the love interest, male main character. So cute. Half British, half Trinidadian. Cool. Okay, anyways. And then we can, I guess, look at the book. Purple! Pretty. Ooh. That's cool. It's like a little, like, landscape, but you're, like, looking through the window kind of feel. Uh, very simple, but very pretty. And then we have the reversed dust jacket. Which is nice. Does it look more familiar? No, but I do really like it. I'm gonna be honest. Like, this is very pretty and cool, but this is definitely like more my fantasy uh, jacket style. <laughs> like, I have a whole shelf that basically looks like that. Alright, and this says on the inside there is a cost to survival, Violet Everly. It is just a matter of fine tuning the price. For centuries, Everleys have seen their brightest and best disappear, taken as punishment for a crime no one remembers, for a purpose no one understands. Their tormentor is a woman named Penelope, who never ages, never grows sick, and never forgives a debt. Ten years ago, Violet Everly's mother left to break the curse and never returned. Now Violet might, must find her mother, or she will be taken in her place. Her hunt leads her into a seductive, magical underworld of power-hungry scholars, fickle gods, and monsters bent on revenge, and into the path of Penelope's quiet assistant, Alexander, who she knows cannot be trusted, and yet to whom she finds herself undeniably drawn. Tied to a very literal deadline, Violet will travel to the edges of the world to find her mother and the key of, to the city of Stardust, where the Everly story began. Oh! Okay, I'm into this. I'm kind of excited about this. I want to read this much sooner than later because this sounds very intriguing. I just love, like, there's like the normal overworld where it's like things are just like chill and normal, but then there's like the seductive underworld where there's like gods and just like weird magic shit that you're not, like, you know of magic and it's not like so weird because like your family is cursed, but also like, magic you don't normally have. I just, I don't know. 
I don't know. I think it's cool. I'm so into it. That really excites me. Okay, and now we can jump into the YA box, which is stuffed full. So, hopefully something good. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Is that a lunchbox? What's going on? Okay, so this month's theme is Regency and Scandal. Oh, I'm feeling a duplicate coming on. I'm not surprised because this book has had so much buzz, but eh, you know. <laughs> Okay, right off the bat, first thing that I'm seeing is a cute purple little tea and I think wisteria box. You could use this for your makeup or maybe a, like a lunch if you so chose. Uh, they consider this to be a lunch box designed by Bluey Boo. Take your meals to, on the go with this insulated lunch bag. This does not feel insulated whatsoever. Adorned with a stunning print inspired by the mysterious society of Lady Scoundrels by India Holton. Um, very cool. I'm gonna tell you right now. This is not that insulated. This is like your elementary school cheap high <laughs> uh, uh, lunchbox. But it is cute. I don't know if I'll really get that much use out of it, but I do think it's cute. Okay, and then the next thing that I see here is the Otherlands plant pot, which is Emily Wilde. I feel like Owl Crate and Fairy Loop are so often on par with each other, which is cool, but Owl Crate is a United States based um, book box, whereas Aluma Crate and Fairy Loot are in England somewhere, I think London or something. And so I think Fairy Loot and Aluma Crate might have some kind of deal where like they don't try to step on each other's toes and make it different enough so they can get more people to buy both, you know? But Fairy Loot and Owl Crate, I don't think have a deal like that. And sometimes I wish they did so that we didn't get so many repeat books. But this is just a super small little pot. Um, and it just says the Outer Lands. And it's just pretty flowers. Uh, interesting shape. I kind of feel like if they didn't have like the hole at the bottom, you can make like fun little tarts or desserts or pies. It's just like a little baby little mini pie or something. Um, but yeah, this is fine. I don't foresee myself using this to plant anything because I don't, I'm not really a gardener. I usually use these kinds of things for like bookmarks, but I don't feel like it's not going to fit a bookmark super well. So I don't know what I'll do with this yet. Okay. And then the next thing that I am seeing is uh, an apron. Interesting. Oh, this smells so bad. <laughs> Anywho, um, yeah, cute little apron, the little pockets, so it goes like around your waist, I assume. Yeah, apron designed by, whew, at Forensic and Flowers, inspired by Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater. That makes sense. It's cute. I really like this color, and the little pocket design's cute. Um, again, smells horrendous. <laughs> this does not smell great um but it's cute so I'll give them that I don't really wear aprons when I cook so this is kind of a useless item even though it's cute um it's one of those things like maybe I would use it in a video if I did like some kind of baking or cooking video but like overall it's just not something I see myself using and then we have a pin this is a pin for the book um it's a brooch technically that i would never wear <laughs> um it's just our character it's very the brooch itself is i think trying to stay within like the stylized version of the character which i think the character art is beautiful and pretty but the brooch itself just looks so meh and like kind of cheap and like it doesn't really fit together i'll stick this on one of my banners but it's not i'm not super excited about it if i'm being honest and then next, Black Cliff Academy. Okay, I think this is from last month. <laughs> I was like, I'm so confused. This isn't on the thing. This is a little travel box that was supposed to come last month but wasn't able to. And it's just like a little storage unit. Uh, good for travel and such. <laughs> so that we were supposed to get last month and didn't. I understand again. I actually see myself using this probably a lot for travel. I think it can fit a good amount of stuff. Um, and since I don't really travel like far and wide, I think that I will actually get good use out of that. 
And then the next thing in here are the tarot cards. So we have, uh, okay, wow. I did not foresee be like this big and popular. I don't know why. I thought it was like cool and hyped and like people were enjoying it, but I didn't think it was gonna get this, this hyped. Anywho, um, we have the two main characters. I think it was poor placement to put a moon on her boob, but that's just me. What do I know? It's cute. <laughs> I won't complain. I like it. <laughs> I like the character art. And then we have the book, which, you know, it's very like back and forth between whose books are betters. Betters? Better when it comes to um, Owl Crate and Fairy Loot because, again, when you have similar books so often, it's very hard not to compare which one's better or worse and like the designs and stuff. Oh, gross. <laughs> Ooh, Okay, sorry. I'm so, so wow, sorry. Bad first reaction. I don't like, I don't like it. Now that I made the book cuter, that <laughs> makes me a little bit happier. Um, last year's, last month's item, a hit. Uh, doesn't qualify for this specific month though, unfortunately. Apron, I'll never use. Lunch pail, not my aesthetic, uh, and probably won't use. I have different lunch pails that I prefer. A pin, I'll stick it on something. If I love the book, I might feel different about it, but at this current state, it's kind of like a meh thing. And a very cute pot, but I will, pot I will probably not utilize, and therefore I don't know where to put it. <laughs> so I'm being maybe a little bit picky. Not my favorite fairy loot that I've gotten, just the items are not very useful to me and I don't see myself using them very often. Um, and again, like when it's a repeat book, jump scare with the art <laughs> at first. This is one that I'm con like heavily consider canceling because the first book was Silvio Moreno Garcia's Silver Nitrate, which I did not get and it was pretty. Um, I'm excited in the book, but I hadn't heard that many great things. And then the book that we got last time was so disappointing that I wasn't like jumping over, jumping for joy over it. So now we're going to see what this one's all about. And here we have, is there a theme? The invocation. Oh, okay. Wait. Oh, oh, okay. This might, well, huh, huh. <laughs> oh, she's so small. Why is she so small? Okay. Interesting. How? How do I feel about this? <laughs> huh. Okay. So this is the Invocations by Crystal Sutherland, author of House of Hollow, which controversial opinion I didn't love. I really wanted to love it. It was like a five star prediction. I was so excited for it. And then I read it and it just fell flat. It didn't meet the expectations that I had for it, which I know is a little bit unfair, but I had heard so many good reviews and then I got to it and I was like, this wasn't what I was hoping for. So here we have their newest book. Look at these pretty girls. They're so gorgeous. I love this art. I kind of want this as a face out. I have no idea where I could put it, but it's so pretty. And then we've got, I'll have to show you in the close-up because it's kind of hard to tell, but there's a little bone man. A little ghosty bone man. Uh, on the back is like this beautiful manner. Ooh, I'm loving it. I definitely had this on my like anticipated releases because I definitely wanted to try this author again. And I'm just, I'm very excited and intrigued, but also just like a little nervous. But holy cow, look how pretty. And then the back, ugh. I'm really loving this design. She's so small. <laughs> yeah, cute and small. Uh, and then the absolute best end pages. Is this Dark Academia, you think? This is giving me Dark Academia, which I am here for. <gasps> God, I love it so much. With, like the hands and the daggers. Like this is my dream aesthetic. This is who I want to be. If I had thought harder about what tattoos I wanted in life, it would probably be very much this style. Like the very like Harry Styles, <laughs> like butterfly tattoo uh, vibe. I said it, and then it is signed with them for all the angry girls. Let's fucking go. Okay, yeah, I'm. She's pulled me in again. I just there's something about her covers that fucking slap, and they're all just so pretty. I definitely prefer this over the actual book cover. I don't know. This just like looks better. 
Okay, so let's read what this is actually about. Five women are dead. The killer leaves no fingerprints, no DNA. Police are utterly stumped. In a world where only women can use magic and the men who know about it seek to eradicate them. Three damaged young women. <laughs> oh no. It's never going to be claimed as damaged. Three damaged young women, one cursed, one hunted, and one out for revenge will team up to track down and take out the brutal supernatural killer. Jude Wolf is rich as sin and handsome as the devil, but she's also cursed. Her immortal soul is tethered to a rather hateful demon, and she wants the hell out of the deal. What Jude needs is a curse writer, and she thinks a string of dead women, all of whom she suspects of messing with the occult, might just be able to lead her to one. Zara Jones has also been tracking the murders since they began. Her older sister was the killer's first victim. Zara doesn't want revenge. She wants to find a way to bring her sister back. What Zara needs is a witch, a sorcerer, a necromancer. What Zara needs is a curse writer. At the apartment of the fifth victim, Jude and Zara meet by chance, and there they find a clue that brings their paths crashing together. A strange business card bearing three words. Emma O'Brien, curse writer. Ooh! <laughs> you know, I'm invested. I'm interested. I will definitely get around to that this year because I think that sounds lovely. Man, that was a good one. Dang it. <laughs> it sucks when you're like, I want to cancel. Okay, well, it's a good book. Ah. Okay, and then we have then we have the last one, which is the Illumicrate Young Adult. I also don't know what this is gonna be. A little inspiration for your day. If this is another space opera, I might cancel Illumicrate faster. Ooh, okay, no. The theme is murder mystery. February's theme is caged hearts. Okay, okay, okay. The first thing that I'm seeing is an enamel phone grip. This one says the Ministry of Alchemy, Enchantments, and Supernatural Entities. Um, this is inspired by Master of Jin by P. DeJelly Clark. I'm so sorry if that's incorrect, but I've read the book. I feel like I need to reread it because it just didn't. I feel like I read it during reading slump and it might not have like hit as hard. It was created by At The Bitter Season. So. I have a different phone grip. I don't have one on my phone currently just because like I don't, I love my case and I don't really want to cover it. Uh, it's just the moon phases with like the zodiac star signs, <laughs> like the like constellations. There we go. Uh, I don't have a Kindle yet so I don't have like a need for one of these right now but they're cool. I currently have like a moth one that I'm really excited to use when I get my Kindle so they're nice to have though at least. Oh, and then we have a little library stamp. This one is inspired by the Wayward Children series by Sean McGuire. I really need to read them, but it's like, who knows when they're going to end, right? I'm like, oh, cute. From the library of, and then there's like a place to put your name, and then there's just like a little stamper, my guy. Very cool. I love stamps. I really want to get into like that crafty artsy side again. It's been too long. Will I put it in books? Probably not. I'm not typically a mark my books kind of girl, so probably won't happen, but it is very cool. That was the Eleanor West Library Stamp designed by Anna Bailing. Okay, next up we have, oh good lord, another apron? Are you serious? Why? 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 Oh, it's so big too. I mean, it's cute, I guess. It's giving... Mad Hatter. <laughs> is that the vibe? That's what it's going for? So this is the cinnamon and gingerbread apron designed by Joanne Palmer. This is inspired by A Wizard's Guides to Defensive Baking by... Was it T. Kingfisher that wrote that? Something like that. It's fine. Am I gonna use it? Probably not, but it's fine. It looks cute. Okay, the next thing that I am seeing looks more interesting and up my up my alley. Okay, so here we have a little book. On the front it says the best stories are found between the page pages of a passport. And then there's like a bunch of different cute little stamps. Um and then you open it. I feel a pen. Oh I don't feel a pen. Oh, interesting. Is this a sticker book? <gasps> needed in my life. 
I take everything bad I said about Oluwa Crate. They're great. They're the best. So, this is the best stories reusable sticker book designed by Jan Tibbetts. Store all your stickers in one place with this stunning freedom fandom neutral reusable sticker book. This is the best thing I've ever gotten. I've really wanted one of these for a while. I am <laughs> your classic girl that uh, has commitment issues and doesn't want to use her stickers on things and gets very scared. But this way I can put my stickers in here and then when I find the perfect perfect use for them, um, I can I can use them and I can just replace whatever like is empty. Like I can just add more things in here. But then like there's like a cool place to store them all. So instead of having to go through like my two boxes of stickers, I can just flip through a couple pages. Revolutionary. This is the best thing that ever happened to me. This is great. Fantastic. Okay, the next thing I am seeing, some character bookmarks. These are the best. These are the best. These are the best. Light it up bookmark set designed by Mirror Wild at Mirror Wild and Co. Featuring many of our favorite characters from Crescent City. Uh, 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 don't care about Crescent City. I'm going to be so honest with you. I know everyone's hyped. What is going on? Wow, when you don't read the books. Huh? <laughs> I don't know any of these people. One of them has wings. Okay, well, that's some character bookmarks for a book I'll maybe someday read. I own them. Um, it's probably the series that I am least interested from Sarah J. Mass. And I'm also, like, not a stan. I'm not, like, a like a hater. But I do sometimes hate on Sarah J. Mass. Because I don't think her book qualities are that great all the time, you know? Like, I just, I feel like my points are valid. Um, the hype I just don't get. But I don't think she's, like, a bad author. And, like, obviously she's doing well. So it doesn't matter what I think anyway. Because I am just simply a girl on the internet. But... Uh, yeah, it might be, like, eh, years until I devour any more, like, Massiverse, uh, like, seriously. Um, specifically when I say that I do lean more towards Crescent City because it's so incomplete right now and I've heard so many mixed things. Whereas with Akatar, like, I don't have to continue to Akosif. Like, I could just stop until, like, more books actually do come out and I can just read, like, the main books and then, like, Throne of Glass is done and over with, so. Anywho, that's enough of that. Voyage of the Damned by Francis White. So fun. Okay, the back says, we can get murdered tomorrow, tonight, we party. That's, that's iconic. <laughs> that's incredible. <laughs> I love that so much. We can get murdered tomorrow, tonight, we party. I love that. I love that so much. That's, that's advice to live by. Whoa! Oh, I love this. Okay. Okay, first we've got this beautiful fish. A little skeleton fish with a beautiful mermaid tail. Oh, gorgeous. Beautiful. More exciting, though, these end papers. This is everything I've ever needed. This is so cool. I love that it's a map, but it's the map for the ship. This is so freaking cool. Okay. <laughs> Signed by the author. I'm assuming that, yeah, it's going to be the same on both sides. So cool, though. <gasps> I love this. I love this so much. I love pirate books. I love the idea of a magical pirate book. Okay, and then this book is about 12 magical blessings, 12 days at sea, one chance to stop a killer and save the world. For a thousand years, Concordia has maintained peace between the provinces. To mark this incredible feat, the Emperor's ship embarks upon a 12-day voyage to the sacred goddess's mountain. Aboard are the heirs of the 12 provinces of Concordia, each graced with a unique and secret magical ability known as a blessing. Except one, Ganymede, the Scarrow. <laughs> Class clown, slacker, and all-around disappointment. When a beloved heir is murdered, everyone is a suspect. Stuck at sea and surrounded by powerful people with out a blessing to protect him, odds of survival are slim. But as the bodies pile higher, I hate this name, Glanny Middies, must become the hero he was not born to be. Can he unmask the killer and their blessings? 
before this bloody crusade reaches the shores of Concordia? Or will the empire as he knows it fall? <gasps> Ooh, interesting, interesting. Um, if you are in to d and I will always highly, 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 highly recommend the podcast of a cancelled D&D show from a few years ago. It's titled something I should know. This Dungeons, Dice, and Everything Nice. And there is like one kind of like in-between filler <laughs> episode where the party is like traveling to somewhere new and they play a murder mystery on a boat game and like that's just kind of giving the vibes and I'm here for it. I'm so excited. So this was a win simply because this book sounds exciting and I love that sticker book but my camera battery is flashing and it means it's gonna die so thank you for watching. Thanks so much. Hope you enjoyed. Um, what do you think of the books and the boxes? Give me your insight. Tell me how to think because I can't do it myself. So thank you so much for hanging out with me and watching. I will see you guys very soon in my next video. Bye! Bye.